Welcome to another edition of Dragon Sports Live. Second show of the new decade. Woohoo! What's going on, y'all? We do have an exciting show for you today. Oh, we he didn't mention his first part. Okay, never mind. You what? know, normally, you know, you do the couple in sports. That's cool. I was about to say that before you interrupted me. Uh, I'm sorry. They won't have to necessarily go in order, but as she said, it is the highest couple in the sports industry right now. You got the lovely Brie right here, and you got myself, Dante, in the building. I'm hotter. Oh, yeah, you can be hotter. Especially since I'm rocking some new styles right now. You can be hotter all you want, because you mine. He's so bad. I'm sorry, y'all. I apologize for him. But anyways, we got a lot of exciting games that happened over this past weekend, especially in NFL, and we got people getting fired from the jobs. Actually, two of them for cheating, still signing, and I'll tell you more about that coming up. Um, We also got... The youngest 20 rebound triple double. And he's not a center, nor a forward. He's a guy. I tell you who that is. <laughs> and WNBA have got their collective bargaining unit. So, what The fact that they're more productive than the NBA. I, yeah, we're going to get. We're going to. We're going to. Input on that because I like that. But let's start with the baseball first because. We say the best for last, but baseball, yes. A whole bunch happening in baseball. As I mentioned before, we had firings. So this is how it went down. The Astros, they they was accused of cheating, right? Sign stealing. Sign stealing, along with the Reds, right? Not the Reds, the uh, Boston Red Sox. I mean, yeah, the Reds. Red Sox. Oh, no, no, you're right. The Red Sox. So, Cody Bedger, who just got a, a $11.5 million contract deal for 2020 to, avert, to avoid arbitration, for those who don't know, arbitration is a way to dispute salary basis in baseball, for those who don't know. And a lot of the teams try to avoid that. This is that period for that. <laughs> yes, it is. Less is possible. So, they try to avoid that. But Cody... <laughs> Cody Bedger also stated on the Astros thing, he was like, well, the Dodgers did it the right way. I was like, oh, shade. But speaking of the Astros. He got a point. The Dodgers, <laughs> they did. They didn't get caught. They did it the right way. Cool. But Jeff Luhau was suspended for the year. Now fired. And A.J. Hinch, the GM for the Astros, was also suspended for the year and subsequently fired. But the big question now that everybody's wondering is should they vacate their 2017 World Series win? If they vacate it, wouldn't they give the Dodgers first World Series win since forever in the day? Yeah. Don't crack on the Dodgers, but that is a very true point. But let's say who's to say that they'll actually reward that to the Dodgers? They may, they may, may not. We won't know. We shall find out down, later down the line. Like, he definitely should find out. Because, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, that was better. Indians. <laughs> Francisco Linder, seventeen and a half million dollar contract year deal. To vo- stay with the Indians. To stay with the Indians. And yeah, void arbitration. Everybody wants to avoid arbitration. Aaron cool. Judge voids arbitration with an eight point five million dollar deal. And Chris Bryant re- reached an eighteen point six million dollar deal to guess what? Avoid arbitration. And Mookie Betts one year twenty seven million. He was a free agent coming into this. He stays with Boston. For a 27 meal. And he also avoids arbitration. Right. And going back to the Astros issues, they also, what, lost draft picks and pay a $5 million fine. Yeah, that fine was, um, I had had sticker shock when I seen that fine. Said, five what? million dollars? Well, it could have been 10 million. Oh, five million per? <laughs> yep. Hey. So. It is 
What it is. Yes, it is. Um, White Sox did sign AAA and Double A new coaches. Okay. That did just come across my feed, but we'll talk about more about that next week when I get more details on that. Mm-hmm. That was just our, you know, what's happening with breaking baseball news, breaking right news. now. Base, baseball, you know, baseball is in the off season, so it's the arbitration period. They get ready to start spring training next month, actually. Is it next month? Or, yeah, it is next month. Yeah, they get ready to start spring training next month, so we'll be able to give you more in-depth and see how these players mashing in with their new teams if they are on new teams. And you know what kills me? The fact that baseball spans all four seasons. It really does, though. But you also got your fall league, you got your winter league, and then baseball in the summertime, that's when it kick off, so it's all summer long. I mean, I'm not a big baseball fan, but I am going to make more of an effort this decade to go to a baseball game. We've been to it. It's, for people don't understand. Okay, I will say this much. It's faster in person than it is on TV, because on TV it drags. I don't know what they do on TV. They drags, and they also do a lot of commercial breaks. That's that's the best way to put it. No. Lord, excuse, excuse me. Excuse you, Missy. Hey, mind your business. Hey, I'd rather it would come out the mouth than, you know, the other way. <laughs> I would have been running out the studio on that note. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, in other news. Um, so, Kyrie NBA is back. NBA or? We're going to go into the NBA. All right. Kyrie Irving. He is back. He scored 21 points with Four rebounds and three assists against the Hawks, though. <laughs> the Hawks? That was his first game of back. It was okay. Brooklyn against the Hawks. All and right. I can kind of see a difference. I was actually looking at that game. I can see a difference how they act with him on the field. With on the, the Hawks. court? But if you notice, they haven't had their two guard starters together. Exactly together. Yeah, they haven't. So let's see how it works now. They're all together. But on that same note, Raptors fall to the San Antonio Spurs despite the return of Pascal Siakam. Well, see, this is the thing. It's the San Antonio Spurs. It's grand, grand Papa. It's Greg Papa. <laughs> Grand Popovich. Gramps. Well, with, the, with the Santa Claus beer thing going on. He doesn't like Grandpa. He, like, <laughs> he's a coaching phenom, and the Spurs is a team that fights. So it's like. You can never count the Spurs out. That's what that boils down to. Yeah, and it's like they made pretty much made the playoffs almost every year that for the they last make, couple of years. Yeah. Even though they may got knocked out, but they still made it to the playoffs. They still make the playoffs. They're they are fighters. Very, They're scrappers. It's like They're a very good coach team. And you gotta think about teams are looking at tapes. So of course the Raptors is gonna fall and see how return. Right. You can't You went scoreless in the second half. You can't win every game. That is true. And the Spurs is not necessarily an underdog team, so they're not, even though they treat them like they're an underdog team, but they're really not. So you can't say that, but you know who else is back? Who else is back? We got Bradley Bill and Bryant back for the Wizards. Bill has been he was out since January first with leg injury and Brian has been out since December. Oh wow! Well, let's see if they can help this. I was gonna say Spurs. Let's see if they help the Wizards. I mean, you know, for what the Wizards have been dealt with, they're hanging in there. You know, they don't have All Star John Wall when he come back. Man, he gonna look like he forgot to play basketball. No, no, he's not. They show he's doing five on five contact right now. Well, he should be back then soon, right? He, I think it will be soon. Like, they show him. I've seen a highlight of him running, Cause it's been dribbling, wh- doing a little step back, through the leg step back, and then his little floater going to the Cause, rim. Okay, because it's been, what, almost 18 months? Almost, pretty much. Yeah, he's been away from basketball for a year and a half, but that's because he tore his ACL. And then ruptured his Achilles <laughs> in the same go around. So Yeah, so he's been out for a minute, but we will wait we will see. see for the return of John Wall. I'm like, he, he looking good. You know who else is looking good that I'm surprised we haven't seen yet? That big beast, Zion. He has not played since the preseason game back in October. He has, yes, he has been out with the torn meniscus, and so they've been showing video of him. He looks good. He's dunking again. 
threw the legs at that. That's that's the part I'm like. I mean, he's Zion Williamson. When you see him play, you're gonna know why he was drafted. But we the, right now he's not showing that. Cause right, he hasn't played. He hasn't made a debut yet. But I think his debut is close. I can smell it. They just trying to wait for the, the right, right time. What? Which I feel like it's gonna be. What if his debut against the Bulls? That's disrespectful. Or the Warriors. That's disrespectful, but, you know, I mean, the Warriors aren't looking so hot right now. So, we're going to just move on past that <laughs> to... Why, why, no, he might as well talk about the Warriors not looking so hot no, right now. No, no, we're going to pass on that. We're going to go into no, 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 no. Rondo and Kuzma taking over in the absence of AD and LeBron James. Well... No, I, I actually like the attempt. They combined for a total of 54 points, which is more than AD and LeBron. Mm-hmm. They held it down. They held it down. But Kuzma you, took a lot more shots because he knew Rondo wasn't going to be taking the shots like that. Right. Kuzma has looked really good over these past few games, even though he's only averaging 13 for the season. But he is part of the trade rumors. He, I don't – but – See, I don't think that – I think that's just like it, a what story, it is. A rumor. Just a rumor. Just a simple fact. And I haven't – I normally look at those rumors. I look at those next week to see what's going on because the trade deadline is February 6th, everybody. Which February 6th. Around the corner. So I would look at those rumors next week, and I will give you those rumors in the show and let you know what's going on. But Goldie has been looking good. Who? <laughs> Goldie, Cal Kuzma. Oh, yeah. He got I, that. I forget he's back golden. I can't really talk about him because I'm rocking a little bit right now. No, he's full on golden. No, I've seen he's full on, you know. I'm going to have to tell him about himself. But anything. anything. He's been on the tear the last couple games. He's been on the tear. Shooting terror. more with confidence. And then what trips me out is Rondo is my boy. He came from the Celtics. No, when he was God. with the Celtics, he was not shooting threes that much. He was driving he, to the bank. dish. He's actually shooting threes. Very well, too, and still dishing and grabbing boards. You know, well, his game has to evolve, don't hate. I didn't hate. You didn't hear me say I hate. I can't beat Stephen A. Stephen A. hating on everybody. No, he hating on LSU. But we'll talk about that in a second. LSU broke his heart last night. (laughs) And, you know, WNBA, so the Lynx hired two coaches. They hired Hawkins. Cal Hawkins as the Liberty coach. Well, Link, Hawkins left the Lynx to go to the Liberty. But here's a fun fact about the New York Liberty that people may not know. They are owned by Brooklyn Nets now. The same owner who owns Brooklyn Nets also bought the Liberty. So now, really now? Liberty will be playing in Berkeley's instead of Madison Square Garden. <laughs> so they'll play at the Barclays Center. Yep. He purchased that team. So this dude come in and just buying up everything. Buying up every team. I'm like, okay, ball, ball out like that. But why are we talking about WNBA? They got their collective barber quicker than the NBA. We've had lockouts in the NBA. They should be ashamed of themselves. But, see, that shows you that women can be more mild-mannered at times than men. Hey, I ain't making a general. I just said they got it faster. They did get faster. I said it could be some behind that. But anyway, they got theirs. It's for the next eight years. It is a boost hike. Um, the high, the highest paid player was getting one hundred. I'm gonna say one hundred and eighteen thousand. Mm-hmm. Now they're gonna get roughly two thousand and some change. Two or well, two hundred thousand and some change. So let me say it. Let okay. me it. So that's that. Shout out to them women, girls. Y'all get y'all money. Like, and that's that. So, yeah. And then, you know, my boy, no, he ain't my boy, <laughs> but James Harden, Mr. Flop, Mr. Beer. <laughs> Did everybody say flop like ain't no tomorrow? He put. He dramatic. I ain't going to lie. I, he I really see a is. plays where he got tapped. He, it'd be a, like a, a small tap. tap. like this. Be, oh! It'd be like, come on, ref, where the foul at? But anyway, he passed 20,000 points with a 32-point night, has six 30 point plus 30 plus points with 10 or more triple turnovers. Double. Yeah, he had he had, he had the reverse triple double. Lower. Okay. 10 turnovers, 10 rebounds and 30 points. All right then. Which 
But I mean, that's for James Harden. If James Harden have less than two turnovers, something wrong. Well, no, he he gets a lot of turnovers because he forced the ball and they they trap him and they. Right, and then he's flopping, so you know. That, but you know, to get the reverse sent over six times in your career. Yeah. Uh, that's not too good. But you know, because he passed twenty thousand points, you overlook that. You it's just a blemish, just a little small pimple. That just little. Just little. But on top of that, on that night that he had 32 points, Russell Westbrook with 30 points. And it's the first pair to go 35-5 and five since Hakeem and Robert Ory back in 18, eight, well, 18, 18 19, April 14th, 1994. I'm like, you should go all the way back to the NBA the new this then. Ah, man. And I was, like, thinking about it. I'm like, I actually remember that game. Well, I, you were you a whopping five? I was, yeah. I was in kindergarten watching that game. I was at home because I wasn't in daycare yet, so. But, you know, Bulls did get a W the couple days ago against the Pistons, and Drama got ejected. But here's the thing. Zach Levine has been On consistent. Cody White, he, he comes out every now and then. But Bulls did lose yesterday. Or the other day against the Celtics. Again, Zach Levine on a tear. But help me out because something that shocked me, Derrick Rose, hometown boy, got fined $25,000 for guess what? Was it for throwing the punch? Was it for getting a technical? No, he threw a pin into into the the stands. $25,000. $25,000. Okay, NBA, can we talk to y'all? Are these fines just becoming a little absurd? Why well, can't be a $1,000 fine? Why can't be, like, now, every, all y'all fine. in at the max? <laughs> all y'all fine is. 25, 30. 25, I think the lowest fine I seen was 15. Like, you know, man, you're hitting somebody in their pocket. Hit, you know, and you know Rose bent on the tear. Like, the man really should be in the starting lineup, but. He comes off the bench, but he's been the Pistons' leading scorer for, what, the last, like, five games? I'm going to say the last three. Last three. Okay, I'll give you last, last three. Because the, one of the games, it was Drama and Rose. Okay. So, the last three, without Blake Griffin, like, I really think Rose should be in the starting line. I also think the Bulls should have took a chance to kept him. <laughs> Even though he had so many injuries, but... Y'all, y'all kind of sleep on the fact that... But he's coming back, and you can't knock him for that? No, they've been sleeping on him, period. He's going to get six man of the year. They, mm, unless Lou Williams or... <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good, that'll be a good battle, but I'm just saying, all I say is they sleep on him. He's been scoring at least 16 points ever since he left the Bulls, even coming off the bench. He's coming off... It's like, I'm just coming to ball. We understand the Bulls need new front office and a new coach. I, yeah, I don't see like, I don't see it was the point. Like, if was that if that was the point, y'all could have kept Tibbs. Right, because you are you all were on Tibbs because he was playing his superstars way too his much. His superstars way too much, but they were still producing. This dude only they you you not getting consistency from your players. No, you like, get consistency from Zach Levine, and I'm like you that's get, too much on him. Right, you get um consistent from Zach Levine and maybe one other player, but you need consistency overall. So like, what's different from what he's doing and what Tibbs was doing? Tibbs was getting consistency from everybody. Yeah, he played who he played. He, but then he cursed you out too. So he played who he played. So it's like yes, and you know I did mention before, Shy Gilgis Alexander. Just, he's the youngest player ever to record 20 rebound triple, triple double. double. And he's a guard. He's a guard. Which that hasn't all, been done since. Which means all you forwards and centers was getting your heart broken last night. That, and it hasn't been done. Let's see. The last person to do that was Russell Westbrook. And he didn't do 20, did I think he was short. Nine, he did 19 rebounds? Or no, 19 he did 20. Assists? Okay. It just last first last guard to do it was Russell Westbrook. Okay, but you you up there with Oscar Robinson, Russell Westbrook, Shaquille O'Neal. You in the elite Charles company. Charles Barkley. You in the elite company. And you the youngest ever. You're only he's only twenty one. Right, you are in elite company. So keep striving. And that was your first triple double. 
Keep striving. What a way to make history. So, yeah. And, you know, Cavaliers rookie Dylan Wilder, he's out for the season with a leg injury. Ugh. That's all I can say to that. Even Ooh. though y'all uh, got y'all little struggles because y'all coach called y'all thugs. Ooh, my bad. Slugs. Sure he did. <laughs> he know what he was saying. Ain't nothing new. And last not but least, Katie Smith was hired as assistant coach for the Lynx. Now, she's the third time, what? all-time leading scorer. Well, welcome to the league, Katie See, Smith. Welcome to the league. I, I like to, you know, acknowledge my WNBA because nobody else does. They don't even get the, We got to literally click in the section to find their section. You know, feel me? That's disrespectful. But you know. But you know. And we're going to s- switch over, change lanes, and we're going to go to football. We're going to start with LSU and Clemson. Woo! Did y'all see that game? I saw that game. I started to watch the game, but then I fell asleep. So I finished watching it, and let me tell you something. That boy, that man. I'm going to take Stephen A., that bad man. That is Joe Burrow. Oh, see, so you were saying that bad man, Lawrence. <laughs> no. Well he, well, he was a bad man, too, just the opposite. Just, he was bad, bad. He was actually bad. No, it just, like, they was going for tick for tech at first. He scored, he scored, he scored, he scored. And then scored. Joe Burrow locked in, got focused, and he just, he threw five touchdown passes, ran for another score, six total touchdowns. He hit his wide receiver, Jameer, is it Jameer or Jamar? One of them, is, I think it's Jamar Chase. Hit him nine times for 227 yards and two touchdowns. I feel bad for the corner for Clemson because he got burned. He was getting eight. But and he also, and you know who else he was hitting? He hit Thaddeus, Thaddeus Moss, who is the son of Hall of Famer Randy Moss. Who was at the game. And he hit him for three of those touchdowns. Or two of those touchdowns. Two. two, and I think two, and then he hit somebody else with the fifth touchdown. So, yes, Joe Burrow deserves that. Now, I didn't know that he was a fifth-year senior. I thought he was a freshman. <laughs> yeah, I did, too, so I looked till somebody made a post saying he was older than Lamar Jackson. I was like, damn. And he has the opportunity to go number one overall. I I've don't want him to go, go to, to Cincinnati. Cincinnati. I'm agree with Steve when that's, I watch first take. That's <laughs> disrespectful. All that talent that he had, y'all going to send him to Cincinnati, the cheapest organization in the league. That's why they kept Marvin Lewis for so long. Well, not necessarily you that. You know they did not pay Marvin Lewis. It's not necessarily that. It's just like I feel like you're not going to have no receivers because I feel like AJ going to end up leaving in the free agency. He going to leave. He um, going to have no receiver. Best bet, go to Miami. At least you got a head coach. Yeah, but if you go to Miami, Ryan Fitzpatrick's been, been a man. Yeah, but still, you got a young, good quarterback in the wings. Come Chicago. Give Travis yeah. run for his money. Yeah, but Chicago ain't going to be that smart. No offense. No, Chicago actually being smart, but it was like, we're going to stick with our young. Cause it's like we'll switch we 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 and we're switching over to the NFL too. Cause Joe Burrow is definitely gonna go to the draft since he's done with school. He's a fifth year senior. He's absolutely done. <laughs> Lawrence gonna go to the draft. I don't know if he's gonna go. He's a junior or senior. Let me do a little research. Cause if he's if he's a junior, he might go. Because I think he he would go because he'd been there pretty much every time Clemson was in the playoffs against Alabama, which, thank God, it wasn't a Clemson-Alabama. Part four. Four in the You know, and I'm an Alabama. I love Roll Tide, but, you know, I'm feeling LSU a little bit. I still love Alabama because Alabama was my dad's team. But, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling LSU. Well, LSU kind of close to my school, all our modern school. That Olivet Nazarene tires, don't purple nobody, and gold. Don't nobody care about that. I'm just saying, it is the place to be, so y'all. So I believe he's a junior. He's going. He gonna go to the drive. Cause he's been. With, no, he's a sophomore. He must have been a redshirt. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. Yeah, he was a red shirt because he's a sophomore. So he may or may not go because he's only 20. He gonna go. Okay. I think he gonna go. Joe Burrow He gonna go, go. I think because two was two will win. Two and most of Alabama win, so. <laughs> you a hater. I'm not. That's just props. It just seemed like when your quarterback say, yeah, we gonna, um, we gonna go to the draft. And I'm like, okay. Right. That That's that. But switching over to the NFL. Shock of all shocks, I watched this game. Not yet. <laughs> I was just teasing him. I wasn't going to say nothing. Which game are you talking about first? Which one are you talking about first? Which one you want to talk about first? I say let's, I say let's start with the Chiefs. Alright, let's start with the Chiefs. So, I don't know if you guys was watching it, but if you wasn't watching it, the score was 51-31. to 31. Texans had a 24.0 lead. Over and the cheese lost it. in the first half. But here's the crazy part. Here's a little recap of what happened in the first quarter. First quarter, instant touchdown, Texans. Two seconds later, block punt, touchdown, Texans. Texans. Then force them to punt again, touchdown, Texans. Texans. They scored literally, I want to say, three touchdowns within a minute and 50 seconds of each other. And then second also- quarter happened. Pat Chiefs. Mahomes happened. They scored a touchdown again. It took him three minutes total. Again, Patrick Mahomes happened, and that the Chiefs became what the first team first to be team. down by twenty points and win by twenty points in a playoff game. Yeah, first team down twenty points to win by twenty points. On top of that, threw for what six touchdowns in that game? Five. Oh, my bad. Five touchdowns. I think he may have had the rushing touchdown. So, yeah, he had six touchdowns on the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, once they got that lead, they was not letting go. And this is what fellow team Ravens should have did. And it was like they had too much. And the Ravens' downfall was I think they personally had too much of a rest period. I think they was they were very rusty and the reason why we say they had too much rest because not only did they have a bye a first round bye but they set their final game so they set week 17 then they have a first round bye so i think uh rust definitely plays a factor in especially for lamar jackson when you look at what lamar jackson was doing he was constantly playing week after week you set him for a period of time and i think he just he went cold well, then he also was getting frustration. You can, if you watch the game, you can see the frustration. Like they, what they say, as they were saying, oh yeah, during the regular season, the Ravens was eight for eight on fourth, fourth and one, fourth and short conversions. I was like fourth down conversions, and they were what one of eight. They was all three. <laughs> oh my bad. Yeah, they was all three on fourth down conversions in that game. And they also had the fewest penalties called on. They had multiple penalties called on in that game. One Lamar Jackson with the horse collar grab. We well, technically didn't even grab him, but that's he, what they called. Right. I didn't see him grab him in the collar, but if y'all going to want to go with that, feel free. His arm was too close to comfort, but that's what's caused the downfall. And they could not get the run game. Like, Lamar got his, his yardage off. And he threw a couple touchdowns, but but he also threw a couple picks. He threw a pick. A lot of them was they, drop passes. It was like right. the passes was right on the money, I mean, so it wasn't even they on the were receivers. Hitting people in the chest, but this is my thing. It was drop passes, but it also was they couldn't get their offense going, and Derrick Henry got going for the Titans. It took him a minute, though. It like, took him a minute. It took him. I want to say about what the second quarter, and then he just started running the ball down their throats. I, I mean, it took him, but. When he got going, he got going. Man. And on top of that, they kept running the ball. The team with the most possession, even though it didn't work for the Texans this time, but the team with the longest possession usually is the team that wins in most cases. Right. And I would say going back to the um, Texans and Chiefs, there were a lot of questionable calls by Bill O'Brien. So. Hey, watch the sticker with him all the way, though. So, you know, that was that. That that game was pretty good. 
the Packers Seahawks game. That was even better. You know why? That, <laughs> that was the best mm, game. Need that water, huh? I do. <laughs> that was the best game of probably the whole weekend because. You know, the Packers, they were up, and then all of a sudden, Russell Wilson just started, hype, who, hype, hoop, you know, oh, snap, are they going to come back? Are they not? It was, it was a good game. But they they are questioning why Pete Carroll decided to punt the ball in the fourth quarter, knowing they're down instead of going for it. That well, we know Pete Carroll tends to make questionable calls. I mean, they would, Russell Wilson would be a two time Super Bowl champion if they gave it to Beast Mode. Or, yeah, if they didn't, but he threw it. And you know what happened? Patriots they, happened. <laughs> we're not talking about your Patriots. You brought it out. out. <laughs> I did bring that up, and I was angry about that. But on the same token, I have a question. And this, I mean, this has nothing to do with the weekend, but why was Russell Wilson subject to a drug test the next day? He had a hell of a good game. So <laughs> I'm just like, okay, Russell Wilson, really? And he thought it was a joke. He was like, seriously? Y- y'all want to drug test me? Seriously. I don't do drugs. But it's it's just the lead. At least it's not, you're hearing other people. I guess it's also a way for them to, because who is it, Eric Reed? Y'all kept make, giving him drug tests? Yeah. Every so often he's like, man, this is the fifth one, this this is the seventh one this week. Random drug test. So basically, and they was like, we, we rarely do it. So they choosing the superstars that's doing well. It was like, are you on drugs? Are you on roids? I don't let's, know what let's, it is. let's test this out. And that's why you get a random drug test. But it happens. Whatever, it's some boo. That went down the wrong pipe. I need water. Have you ever burped and it went down? Mm-mm. Yeah, that kind of what I just did. I but, need water, that's what I need. <laughs> You know, speaking of Patriots, we did have Patriots run into trouble. We had Julian Elderman jumping on cars and got arrested for that post appearing court sometime in April. And then you had Patrick Chung, um, who had a cocaine drug charge against him, but it was dropped. And I was like, why? Y'all play football. Y'all don't need to. So, so they're turning into the Dallas Cowboys? Either Dell or turn to A.B. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> could turn to AB. Speaking of AB, <laughs> give it a break. Chill. Relax. Do some. <laughs> you had a little league football team, a police little league football team. Give you your donation back. Because you bad mouth the police. Like an idiot. You're, first of all, you're acting like an idiot in front of your children. You have children. You're berating their mother. Then when the cops don't do what you want to do, you start berating the cops. And all while doing this, you are trying to get back into the NFL. Do. you just not helping yourself. That's all at I'm all. saying. At <laughs> all. You're not helping your case at all. And you had to work out. The same side, we would have. Signed considered you. you or considered you, but it's not the time. They trying to wait till everything clears out. Can you make more of an ass of yourself? Yes, that what she said. <laughs> but that's you know that's that. Um, Tommy Romo, he's a good football player, but he's a great. I am afraid a damn great analyst. No, when you sit there and can literally call the play before it happens, and it's the exact play that he called, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, football, playing for may not have been your thing, thing, but, you know, and being an No, he was a good quarterback. It's just. They didn't give him the subsequent pieces that he needed. I'm just saying, you were able to call, like, I listened to him. I'm, I'm mute. I literally turned my TV up, not muted my TV. I usually mute my TV and call the game myself, but. This man was Make like, they should run the, they're gonna run a play action bootleg it, and then uh, it happens. Cause when it, when it the Chiefs game? No, it was the Ravens game. It was the Ravens game. Yeah. I'm just looking at it like, how do you know this? Oh my word! On top of that, he's set to be the highest paid analyst in history. With uh, he possibly can get ten to fourteen million. Who? For his contract. 
when I talk about free agent sign, yes. That's a free agent sign. Yes. But also, I would like a job in the entry. So if you guys are listening to this podcast, me, I, Dante Payne, would like to be an analyst. I can give you great analytical thoughts as well as statistical and mathematical thoughts. Yep, just throw myself out there. Yep, you see how I did that, baby? <laughs> I do see how you do that. I'll be right by his side, but you know that's so. all. Yep. And, you know, we got Hall of Fame running backs still running, a.k.a. Tiki Barber. He's been running th- marathons. He just finished his 13th marathon and is actually training for the next one, which is February 9th in Tokyo. You know something about marathons, don't you? Well, you know something about running. I know something about running because I, I am a runner myself, but marathons ain't, that's that's a whole new, that's 26.1 miles of you straight running. And if you, you train properly, you can do it too. I'm planning on doing a marathon. I believe in you. I got to catch up to Tiki now. Okay, I'm, well, <laughs> me and everybody else will be out there supporting you. And you know. Our coaching changes has happened a lot quicker than normal. <laughs> well, yeah. So let's start with the with the with the Giants. They get Patrick Graham from the Dolphins, and he's heading to the Giants as in the same role as a defensive coordinator, right? Okay. That's one of the changes. John DeFlippo is out of Jacksonville, Jacksonville. as the offensive coordinator. And apparently people have an issue with your play calling because this is the, what, second time you've been out, knocked out the first season? Yeah, I I kind of, like, when I looked at his uh, coaching record, well, coordinator record. Yeah, I'm like, okay, you're better as a quarterback coach. Because every time I see, like, him as a coordinator. Offensive coordinator. It was only, One like, year. a year. And I think the longest I've seen was two years, but it was literally only – one year as a offensive coordinator, and then you out. So that w- that happened. Bears fired <laughs> their uh, offensive coordinator, and then they hired Bill Lazor as an offensive coordinator. Who he was offensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins in 2014 to 2015, Cincinnati Bengals from 2017 to 2018. But he's also a quarterbacks coach. He's been a quarterbacks coach before, and. You know, Nagy's going to take most of the play calling himself because, you know, that's what he's doing. So that gives Laser more opportunity to work with Trubisky, who's supposedly supposed to be the protect the uh, 2021 season starter, which I have faith in him. He just needs the right pieces around him, especially on the line side. They give him more time to throw, especially when you got Kyle Long, who retired. Mm-hmm. Um and you got 21 free agents, and most of them are defensive backs and offensive line. Got to fix up. Got to clean up. And, yeah. And just to name a few of those free agents, Nick Kowalski. He was supposed to do this last week. I didn't name him. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Ha Ha. Danny Trevathan. Oh, no. Yes. He's a free agent. Um, Pierre Lewis, who... They, I think, signed midseason, and he's been doing great for them. So, basically, all your middle linebackers <laughs> we toast. are free agents. So, let's see if you keep those guys together, keep them together. Let's see if, if Ha-Ha want to stay, because he did only sign a one-year contract, so I expect that he'd be a free agent. But let's see, like. If we can what, make him stay. Make him stay. Like, do he like this defense? So, that was that. More coach changes is... Uh, Joe Brady. Joe Brady passed, passed on the contract with LSU to become to join the Panthers as offensive coordinator. Mm. So that was that. That was deep. And then if we didn't mention it, Chargers tight end Antonio Gates announced his retirement. He last played in the league in 2018. He officially he wanted to play, just like I want to play, but nobody picked him up, so he officially retired. Yeah, but. And can somebody explain this to me? Explain what? Why the Broncos fired their offensive coordinator and hired Pat Shermer? Well, their offensive, if you look at the Broncos, Vic was pissed with the offensive play calling. Vic is a defensive coach, so he's probably calling defensive plays. He's looking at what the offensive, like some of those plays, I'm like, why did you call that? 
Okay. And Pat Shermer was originally the offensive coordinator. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't, I mean, he wasn't as, that hot as the, as the Giants coach, but if y'all like it, I love it. Happy New Year. I'm saying he, Pat Shermer's better than Rich. Okay. I, I'll say that. Pat Shermer's not a head coach. He's offensive coordinator. He's offensive coordinator. Okay. And the Lions hired Eagles DB defensive back coach Corey Unden. Unden. Okay. As offensive coordinator. And it was one more. Oh. The 49ers beat the Vikings? 49ers beat the Vikings. But, and here's the crazy part. Was it? No, it was the Ravens and... No, yeah, it was the 49ers Vikings game. Both of those coaches were up uh, for the Cleveland Browns head coaching job. And you know who got it? It was Kevin Stratoraski. Kevin from the Vikings. Stefanski, yeah. Stefanski, Stratoraski, Stefanski, you know. Stefanski. All he, those skis names get it. <laughs> he received a five year deal to become the Cleveland Browns head coach. And he made a statement today saying the sky is the limit for quarterback Baker Mayfield. He did. I want to see what he's going to do for well, that he, team. Well, he's an offensive-minded coach, so he's offensive coordinator, so let's see what he got. Which means now all co- head coaching vacancies are now filled. Unless somebody gets fired. <laughs> Before the season? Yeah, because, yeah. you know, a lot of coaches may not get fired until the fiscal year starts. That is true, too. So we may know, we know, we don't know what holds for them. That is true. Because he also had Matt Rule joining the coaching ranks, too. So That is true. And we don't know what big trades will happen, what big signings are going to happen. We won't know none of that until after the Super Bowl and maybe about a month later. But until then, you know, tune in with us, with me, Dante Payne, and the lovely Bree. The sexy lady, sexy baby. Only, only I can say that, though. <laughs> and tune with us next time with another edition of Dragon Sports Live. We'll have a championship weekend recap. Peace out. Yeah. Peace.